Hi, my friend. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about networking for writers. I know the word networking brings about this sort of collective groan, like, oh, I don't want to have to do that. But the truth is that networking is making friends. It's about making connections and it's something that you can do. And I've got some really good tips for how you'll do it. Also, at the very end, I'm going to give you my three never ever evers, which I see all the time from writers online. And I want to make sure you never do it. I will come after you if you do. So be sure you watch all the way to the end. My name is Kelly Notaris. I'm the founder of KN Literary Arts. I have been working as a book editor in the book publishing business in the US for the last 20 years. And I've worked for some of the biggest publishers in this country. And and what I do now is bring that information directly to you on this YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video, all right? I want your book on the shelf and I keep this YouTube channel to make sure that happens. Okay, so today I wanna to talk to you about networking. What is the deal with networking? People do not like the word. They're scared that, that it means you have to go out there and toot your own horn and brag about yourself in a way that nobody wants to hear. And that is completely not true. Only people who do networking badly do it that way because that leaves a negative impression on the people that you're talking to. That's the opposite of what I want for you. So I wanna to talk to you today about what networking actually is. In my experience, networking is about making a connection and finding common ground with someone. And then it's about trading services, trading gifts in exchange for one another. So my number one, first most important tip I have for you when it comes to networking for writers is to make sure that you give before you ask for anything, okay? So giving something could be as simple as finding an author online whose book you really liked and leaving them an Amazon review, telling other people to buy it. It could be something like inviting an author to guest blog on your blog. There you're giving them the gift of exposure to a whole audience, yours, that they've never known before. Um, if you have a podcast, it's an excellent way to get those connections made is to host a podcast and invite people who you would like to be in connection with to come and be a guest on your podcast. That is an excellent way to make a really deep connection because you're going to have a conversation with them. So in this way, you are inviting them into uh, something that's of benefit for them, giving them a platform from which to speak to an audience that they've never heard of before, or you know, again, leaving a, a review where you talk to people about how great their book is, right? So you don't know how this exchange is going to happen. And that is my second tip. Be open to the mystery. Be open to whatever the possibility is of why you are connecting with that person. If you go in and you say, I wanna be connected to this person because they got an endorsement from a high level author on their book and I want them to introduce me to that high level author, I almost can guarantee you that is not going to happen. So a lot of endorsements actually happen based on previous networking, on previous experience, um, people who know each other personally. No one is going to hand over a book by someone that this famous author has never met before and say, you need to make an endorsement here. Why? Because my connection with that author is authentic and true. I'm not going to try to turn them into some sort of a marketing cash cow for myself or to try to win favors with someone else. No one does that. In fact, that's terrible networking. Um, instead, make a lot of connections, plant a lot of seeds where you don't know when or how they are going to come to fruition. I promise you eventually they will. Okay, number three is that you want to learn how to listen really well. So asking questions is key. When you are in a connection with someone, be it at a writer's conference, someone who's on a podcast, someone who you're um, chatting with because a third person put the two of you in touch, make sure you ask more questions than you answer. Really get information about this person. Find out what makes them tick, not in a weird, creepy way, but just in a way like, hey, how can I help you? How can I be of service to you? you you need to ask a lot of questions and then you need to listen. I highly recommend anytime you're making connection with somebody who you believe eventually might be in your same category, might be someone who could um, do a favor for you down the line, take notes. Make sure you keep in mind who this person is. What is important to them? Do they have children? Are they married? Where do they live? Take those notes. I My tip is that I keep those notes 
in the contact notes section on my phone. So I open up a contact that I'm talking to and I will just, you know, maybe I'll take notes on a piece of paper and transfer them later. Maybe I'll do it on my computer while I'm on the phone with them. I'm gonna just take some notes. What's their wife's name? What's their child's name? Where do they live? What's important to them? So that the next time we connect, I can go back there to get reference points for what was the connection that we had, okay? Again, I have no idea when this person's gonna come back into my life. I have no idea how they're going to show up for me, but this is a really good way to make sure that the next time we're in contact, I remember these things. Maybe if you're talking to a writer, it's what is the new book that they have coming out? When is it coming out? Put that in your calendar. That day, their pub day, send them a congratulations text or email. I mean, so few people understand that your publisher is not gonna like really go big guns on your pub day. It feels great to get a little ping from a friend or a contact, someone that knows that that day is big for you and just saying congratulations and good job. So, you know, put that in your calendar. Taking the time to be creative and thoughtful is the best way to nurture a contact over time. Okay, the last tip I wanna give you in this one, it's so funny that I have to say this, but unfortunately, my friends, I do. Say thank you. Say thank you for taking the time. I know how busy your day is. It really meant a lot that you were willing to talk to me. Write a thank you note and put it in the mailbox. I said it, I know, crazy. It's so like old school to do that. It's what my mom made me do every single time I got any gift from anyone in the world before I could enjoy it, before I could spend any money that I was gifted, before I could play with the toy, I had to write a thank you note. And you know what? It taught me the power of saying thank you. And you can, you don't have to always send it in the mail. It depends on what the scope of the experience was. Let's say you went out to um, tea with somebody. That's a big chunk of their time. They drove to the tea shop. You had your cup of tea. They drove home. That's a big event. I would actually send a thank you note for that. Um, and also ask them, is there anything I can do for you while you're there? That's another way of saying thank you. Like, thank you so much for giving me the information you just gave me, letting me pick your brain. What can I do for you? And then presuppose some things that you could offer and say, you know, in your thank you note, if ever I could introduce you to so-and-so, or if ever I could get this going for you, please let me know. I'd love to help. And then when the time comes and they make that request, do it, okay? You've got to actually do it and prioritize it. This is how we keep networking contacts alive. Okay, so what are my three absolute never, ever, 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 evers? Okay, <laughs> these are so important. I just had one of these happen the other day. So without having um, a lot of contact, someone who knew me from online wrote me and said, I just wrote you the most amazing review on Amazon for my book, the book you were born to write. And I was very excited and I went and read it. It was beautiful. And I wrote back and I said, thank you so much. And then this person said to me, now I hope you will review my book. Ooh. No, no, actually that left such a ter terrible taste in my mouth. I'm actually not interested in doing something, in receiving your review, in if you believe I owe you something in return. That's the thing about networking that feels so icky. It's not actually, I'll scratch your back, so then you have to scratch mine, here's how. Can't be like that. It's more like, um, I would love to scratch your back. And if ever, you know, if you would love to scratch mine in return at some point down the line, here's my number. It's not, you have to do this, I want you to do this. When it comes to Amazon reviews, it's a big one for me because obviously I'm a book editor. I care a lot about my name and my reputation. I need to make sure I really like your book and think that it's worth it. I'm not just gonna give you a review in exchange for you giving me one. I can't do that, it actually doesn't work for my reputation. The fact that this person didn't understand that showed me that they weren't really thinking about who I was in the world, and that to me was a turnoff. So never ever expect something, someone ask for somebody to do something um, very specific, you know, in a way that it feels like bribery. Hey, I did this for you already, so you need to do this for me. It does not feel good. Okay, another online no-no. Please do not drop your URL in comments on someone else's post. It is a notorious sign that says amateur, amateur, okay? No, and, and how often have you actually clicked a link in comments on someone's Instagram post or Facebook post or anywhere online on their blog post? You know, how often do you click through that? I don't, I just don't think people do it very often because it's so obviously that they gave this, this you know, comment in exchange for the hope that they're gonna be able to um, market themselves on your coattails. No, 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 don't ever do that. It is wonderful to build a relationship with someone over time by commenting frequently on their posts, but don't ever use that platform to get something in return. You're building relationship. There's a real difference between building relationship and trying to 
find a place where you can post your own billboard, okay? So never, ever do that. And then the final one that I want to say is don't ever expect success to happen overnight. Never, ever. If you do, you will be disappointed. You will think that marketing, that networking doesn't work for you. It's simply not true. It sometimes takes a really long time. So I'm going to finish this up by telling you a story about me because I had an amazing networking experience that has really built my company for me. And it can do the same for you and your book. I had no idea what I was getting into. I was working at Sounds True as a, um, the vice president in charge of the creative division, and I had gone to Book Expo in New York. It was really important to me to go there and network. That's what that event is about. You go and meet people, and you know you get to know people that you wouldn't otherwise meet and know, and maybe you have no idea what's gonna come of it. So one of the things that we used to do was organize a dinner called the Woo Woo Dinner, which was for all the publishers who were the spirituality, personal growth, self-help publishers, and anyone who was representing those publishers Publishers at Book Expo was invited to a dinner. So I ended up being seated across from Reed Tracy, who is the CEO of Hay House, another major spirituality personal growth um, publisher. And at that event, he and I simply connected as people. I'd never met him before, and I'd heard a lot about him, but I, you know, hadn't um, ever had the pleasure of being in his in his company. But we actually really got along. We saw things similar ways. We talked about things we knew, people we knew in the business. It was just a way we we built a lot of common ground. And at the end of that dinner, Reed said to me, "Someday you're going to work for me," <laughs> and I I was like, "Ha ha! Who knows? We'll see." Well, look at this. I don't actually work for Hay House, but over the course of many years, let, let's see, that was at least four years before I was invited to speak at the Hay House Writers Workshop for the first time in 2013. And that was really where I met my core audience uh, for KN Literary Arts. And so I just want to say, you, you just don't expect anything to happen overnight. Don't even know... Go in with a completely open mind and you will not be disappointed. So never ever go in with some expectation that it's gonna turn out one way because it'll probably turn out another. And if my experience is any um, example, it will actually turn out way better than the thing that you thought you wanted. All right, my friends, networking for writers can be fun. It can be lively. It's really about making friends. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please, I'd like to know from you what has been the most successful networking you've ever done. What is your definition of networking? Please leave me a comment below. I always respond to the comments. Looking forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime, happy writing.